All right, folks, welcome aboard here to the Sports Talk Nation. Michael Cohen here with you. We continue our spring training tour, and we're bringing it back to the Northeast here in the New York metropolitan area as we are going to talk about the New York Yankees, the 2018 New York Yankees, a team favored to get, go to the World Series this year, perhaps even win the World Series this year with a lineup that is absolutely loaded. Joining me to talk about this and much more with the Yankees is the one and only Karen Van Cat. Karen, how are you doing? Okay, Michael, I'm I'm tired of the snow. Oh my goodness! This if snow- I have to shovel any more snow, I'm like done. Oh man, this snow is killing me. I mean, seriously. Now I was in Fl- I-, I was in Florida for the second storm, right? I was here for the first mm-hmm. storm that was supposed to be just a rainstorm, and then it turned into a nor'easter, and right. you know we got like six inches, like ten inches of snow, and then I left, and then in the middle of the trip we had the big snowstorm and. I knew there was co- since we all knew it was coming. I called my my travel agent and said, you know, maybe I should just stay an extra day or two. So I extended my stay in Florida, and then when I was at spring training, till Friday, right? And mm-hmm. of course, while I'm down there, everyone up here is suffering as this monster storm hits uh, with like two feet of snow. And then I come back, and then we get it again and again and again, and it just continues. And I just I just want it to melt. I don't think it's going to melt ever. Listen, I've been to Florida two times this year. Yeah. February and March. Both times I had to have my flight changed because mm-hmm. the storm was coming. The first time it was delayed, which I could have flown out. Right. Because it didn't hit. I, I was supposed to fly out at 6 in the morning. They put me at 6 at night. By the time I flew out, it was after 9. By, but by the time I got to Florida, West Palm, it was after midnight. All right. Mm-hmm. The second storm was this one. This one. Three days I lost. I was supposed to leave Wednesday. Right. I couldn't get out till Saturday morning. Gee, it's ridiculous. Now, how many how many games did you get in down there? I got in. I only I only got in the one game. The one game that was the Marlins Yankees game, right? Yeah. Marlins Yankees and Jupiter at mm. the Marlins. It was packed. I can it imagine. was standing room. They actually were selling tickets standing room only mm-hmm. in sections. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where Judge hit the home run. It would have been out of the stadium. Wow. It hit the, their offices in the back. Their offices are at, out towards center, left center field. Mm-hmm. And it hit actually off the facade. The one lady was sitting outside from the office, and she got the ball. They, <laughs> that's where it hit. If that <laughs> wasn't there, that little thing would have gone way way out of the stadium. Wow. So. I mean, because uh, I did, I did uh, three games at the Mets Park, and then I went down to the West Palm Beach Park for the Nationals. Which is a beautiful new stadium. Mm-hmm. It really is. Isn't it beautiful? Oh my Isn't god, that it's nice gorgeous! Stadium? They did a beautiful job. Oh, with that. it's huge. That's the Nationals and Houston. Yeah. share that. I mean, you can. That you, was be- That's gorgeous. I was there last year for opening. Yeah, you could. It you can like wonderful. walk around the entire park. There's never a bad seat. I mean, it was. It's a beautiful stadium. Right. Oh, and it was my. open. Yeah. You know, uh, Jupiter Stadium is an older stadium. It was built in '98. Yeah. I mean, it's still nice, but when you were by the concessions, you felt like claustrophobic. Really? Because they have concessions on both sides instead of just the one side mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. the food, like the Nationals do, and then the other side you see into the stadium. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I thought it was beautiful. We saw I saw the Yankees there last year when they opened it, hmm. and they were playing the uh, Nationals. Then yeah. they were playing Nationals and Astros, nice back to back games. Nice, and um, and of course they sold out those two games because you've got so many. You know, the East Coast of Florida. It's New York. talk about the West Coast and go there, but the East Coast, West Palm area, from Port St. Lucie down to Miami, um, that you've got a lot of New Jersey, New York, uh, Connecticut. You've got a lot of metropolitan area transplants mm-hmm. there. Yeah. You've got snowbirds there. Yeah. All right. I was, I was so, talking to some lady the, my, the first game there. She, uh, I was talking to a, I was sitting next to a bunch of people who were from uh, – who were transplants. They were from New York, but they moved down there. It's yeah. like New York, New Jersey South. It is. You, you meet so many people. When they say South Jersey, they, we're not talking about like Atlantic City or Camden. We're, <laughs> we're talking Florida. Florida <laughs> South Jersey. That, we're they, talking Florida. <laughs> Southeast Florida, mostly. I mean, there are, they're also on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. But they said Michigan and the Midwest really gravitates more to the West Coast. But it's nothing. It's nothing like the East Coast. Oh, I loved so, it! I um, loved it! I loved it down there, and this, that was the first time I've ever done the spring training, and I just, I mm-hmm. just loved everything about it. I mean, Port St. Lucie is just a gorgeous, and I mean, just a gorgeous little city, little town. Both we, so we both enjoyed our trips, but we are back, folks, mm-hmm. and we are, uh, we're going to talk some Yankees here because, you know, this team 
is favored to do some big things this year. Everyone's picking this team to go to a World Series, if not win a World Series. And you know, you know, it's kind of funny that everybody who is this, who who is on the anti-Yankee bandwagon, who hates the Yankees, is like, "Oh, look how much money they spent in the offseason. Look what they've done. They've added all these pieces." But you look what they did. All they did was just add one piece, and that, of mm-hmm. course, is you know, Giancarlo Stanton. Yeah, they did. And they, that was a trade. Yeah, and that was a trade. And they, I know, didn't, they didn't give him that contract. He mm-hmm. came with that contract, and there's a difference. Big difference. I mean, yeah, they got him. They brought in Drury in a trade. They signed Neil Walker. They brought back CC. But other than that, that was really their only big move. And they've been very conscious with the with the payroll. And they're basically, with the exception of a couple of guys, the same team as last year. So it's hard for those anti Yankee fans to say, "Oh, the, the Yankees spent too much money." They're not this year. Not this year at all. Not this year. No, no, yeah. they didn't spend anything. And you're right. If you look at the roster, the way it's constructed. Um, the only new pieces that will be on the roster are, like you said, Drury, mm-hmm. um, Walker, Wade, who's one of their farm hands. He's going to make. He's. They already said he's making the roster. Mm-hmm. Um, and Stanton is a new addition. Think of the new additions. So that's four. Um, everybody else is the same. That means Austin Roman, the backup catcher, Sanchez, Bird, uh, Judge. You know, Ellsbury, Gardner. Um, Hicks. I mean, they're all, it's all the same. Um, Tereus with the backup. He's still there. DD. Um, what did you lose? You lost Castro because mm-hmm. you, you got Stan. Um, and basically that's, not much. That's pretty much else. it. That's pretty much it. You, you, as, I mean, you, as, lo- you lost Matt Holiday. You lose Matt Holiday. Too, so, oh, uh, Matt Holiday. But Holiday really, he had, he, he started out okay. Once he got injured, that was it. Once he mm-hmm. got the concussion and mm-hmm. everything else, it just, it floundered for him. But also, you lose Frazier. I mean, really, Frazier goes it's to the Mets. The same. Yeah. yeah, it's the same team. I mean, yeah, you, like you lose Frazier as well. He was a good clubhouse guy. Now goes to the Mets, but you know you you got Andy Har's coming up. Andrew Har, I should say, mm-hmm. uh, who's coming up. So you're not too worried about that situation right now. at Third base. I mean, the Yankees are the pitching is the same. Yeah, except you've got Montgomery will be in a starting role to start. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, but you know Severino, Tanaka, Sabathia. I mean, they're all, it's the same guys, a mm. gray. Mm. And I'm look. I'm really looking forward to seeing gray. Uh, he had, he's had a decent spring. Mm-hmm. Remember when they come, you know, he, he didn't do great for them last year, but nobody understands the adjustment that has to be made. Never mind. You're in the middle of a season. All right. You're leaving your family. You know, they are human beings and we forget that. They're mm-hmm. not just people say, Oh, they're ball players. They, you're human beings. So you're leaving your family, you've got small kids, blah, 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 whatever, you're moving across the country, that night you go, you, they're putting you in a hotel, maybe you end up with one of your teammates, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, you're not in your own bed, you're not, you know, you're totally discombobulated, mm-hmm. and you're coming to New York, and New York is tough mm-hmm. on coming from the beginning. So now, remember Dee Dee, when he came for, um, they traded him, they got him to replace Jeter? Right. And then uh, he had a terrible first half. Mm-hmm. He had to make the adjustment. Mm-hmm. And then he started, you know, he didn't have the greatest year. And now look at him. You can't stop him. No. He's got power. He's been great defensively. He's hitting. He's getting on base. He's doing all the right things. Um, he's a good base runner. Um, like I said, hitting home runs for power. So you had to give him the, you know, give them the adjustment. Same thing with Hicks. Remember when Hicks came over? Mm-hmm. Um, he was terrible mm-hmm. and he's gotten better. So everybody needs that adjustment. Gray wasn't great last year. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward. Now he settled. He had the off season to get his house, get his family, get, you know, get your act together. And, um, so I think, I think he's going to have a good year. This is a big year. I hope for, he does. Well, they need him to, because this is a, this is a rotation that, you know, I like the Yankee bullpen. We'll get into that in a second with Patances and Robertson, Canley, and, and Chapman. But this rotation really, you know, I don't want to say it's fr- it's 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 kind of fragile in some ways. You know, Severino had the big year last year. He's your ace. You know, Masahiro Tanaka coming off of an inconsistent year, closed out great, had that big postseason where he pitched very, very well. CC, you know, we'll see what we get out of CC. Is he going to be the same guy that won 14 games last year? And had a nice bounce back year at age thirty-seven. You know, we'll see. I have no idea. 
Um, Montgomery's a guy who's still developing. So for, for to me, you know, Sonny Gray has to really kind of grab the bull by the horns here and become that number two guy and show why the Yankees went out there and traded, uh, traded for him. Because remember, even in the offseason, you know, this team was kind of thinking about Garrett Cole. Do we bring him in? You know, you and I were both very much against that, and Cole now with the Houston Astros. Gray can, is just as good, if not better, than, than Garrett Cole. Just look at the numbers. Career numbers are kind of about the same. And to mm-hmm. me, this needs exactly. to be the, they need this is the year that he needs to go out there, Sonny Gray, and be to be a fifteen game winner again. To be consistent, yeah, exactly. And you're right; he needs to be the number two. Severino has elevated himself enough to become a number one, and we'll see this year the kid. But he's got the moxie; you see him on the mound; he's got the demeanor, and uh, he's he's like a bulldog. So. If, if Gray can move up into that two slot, and, and here's another one. You said Montgomery. He came in as a rookie last year. Mm-hmm. Remember? He started out spring training. He, he wasn't in the starting rotation at all. In the bullpen, then down the minors, then back up. Then we had, he was forced into the rotation at a point. Another adjustment for him. Now he knows what it's like. Mm-hmm. Think of would judge when he had that, he came up for what, half a season? Um, he was terrible, bad, 170. Everybody's like, oh, my God. Then he started out and had a full season. Mm. Okay. Same thing with Bird. I mean, and Sanchez, you make the adjustment. Mm. You've got to give them that little adjusting period. I don't know if it's six months. I don't know if it's their first year. And then you'll see. If they, can, if they come through in the second year, like all these guys have done, they're keepers. Mm-hmm. All right? That means they can do it. If they don't, if they flounder again, say Hicks, how bad he was, and he came back, and they, they believed in him, believed in him, and mm-hmm. then he stuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, we made a mistake. You can't have two bad years in a row no. when you first come. You could, they'll give you, 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 you're granted that little leeway, I think, depending mm-hmm. on how you're traded or how you get here. But then after that, you've got to deliver. Mm. Sonny Gray has to deliver. He does. Year. He does. There's no two ways about it. Now the Yankees do have young guys. That are, you know, they do. They have a lot of young prospects. The one guy that I really liked a lot this spring was Jermon. I mean, I thought he. I saw him in that game against the Mets, and he just dominated the Mets. He had a no hitter going into. I think he it was got the his save today. Yeah, uh, he's got a lot of good stuff. I mean, you said he got a save today. I mean, he could start. He could come out, come out of the bullpen. If the Yankees ever needed someone to give them some some innings, you know, at some and they're going to need mm-hmm. they're going to need a guy at some point this year. Someone's going to get hurt. Uh, you know, someone's going to get hurt out of the bullpen or out of the rotation. They're going to need a, they're going to need, need a long guy to give him some innings. Jermon could be that guy. I, I really liked what I saw from him this spring. Well, he um, exclude today. Okay. Because I, I I would have to add it into the stat. Sure. Exclude today. He was had a two point eight four ERA, fifteen Ks in twelve and two thirds innings, not including today. Right. So and now if we I. I'll go to the site and let's see what if they have the. I have um, it updated. I have it updated. His, his ERA is now two point three zero, and he has seventeen Ks in fifteen and two thirds. Okay, yeah. Still, so um, from what I have here, how many Ks does he have? Seventeen total. All right, so he got two more. It means he pitched one inning and two of the three batters he, he K'd, mm-hmm. and he got the save today. Yeah. So, because um, the last spot you're carrying thirteen pitchers. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what they're going to do. And there's one spot available, and it's going to come down to Jermaine or it's going to come down to Holder. Mm. So, and Holder's been good, too. Um, this year, in the, in the, so far, in 10 innings in the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in the um, spring training, mm-hmm. he's got a 1.80 ERA. Mm-hmm. Only two earned run, runs, 11 hits, 10 innings, and he struck out 11. Mm. So they're very... They're very close in what you're going to do. Now, I know Holder's been up more than Jermaine. Mm-hmm. Jermaine came up at the end of last year. They were bringing him up. Um, a, he got more of a taste of the big leagues last year. Mm-hmm. Um, either one. See what happens. I don't know how. They, they've got to make that decision. they got another week before uh, we get to baseball. Yeah. So, um because, we'll because see what the, which one they decide on. Yeah, I mean, because this bullpen is pretty much set. You got Pintanzas, you got Robertson, you got Warren, Canley, and Green. Chapman, of course, is closing. So the the bullpen's pretty much set. But 
it would be it would just be nice to have that one extra guy who can come in there, start a game if you need it, and throw gas. And throw gas. I mean, that would just it would just yeah. make things so much easier. Why aren't you long, man? Yeah. Though this guy probably could give you a bunch of innings too. Mm-hmm. Either one of these kids could give you a bunch of innings. Yeah, the Yankee bullpen is. Oh, it's the cr- Yankee it's bullpen sick. reminds me <laughs> of. Mm-hmm. 96 or 98. I was going to say 98. Remember when they had Ramiro mm-hmm. Mendoza and they had um, Stanton. Even before they, it's before Nelson. even Rivera. He was the, he was the, clo- he was the setup guy for, um, Wetland. what's his name? John Wetland. Wetland, remember? Yeah. yeah. So that, that dynasty of the 90s, then they got, then Wetland left, which was a mistake on his part. He went to all wanted money. And then lo and behold, Mariano Rivera got his chance. Mm-hmm. And there it was. Mm-hmm. Stanton, you're right. Um, and Nelson, Jeff the Nelson. The other one, the lefty, Nelson. Yeah, I mean, Mendoza. I mean, there's other people in there. They have the lefty from um, Australia. Forgot I, his forgot, name. I forgot his name. Top of my head. Mm. But I'm the big guy. He was real tall. But I mean, wait, wait, wait Graham Lloyd? Was that it? Graham, wait, 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 wait. Graham Lloyd. Graham very Lloyd. good. Yeah. Yes. Because I remember so, he went to the Expos um, this, after that. I think this could be better, almost. Mm-hmm. Except you're missing Rivera. Can you imagine this bullpen with Rivera as your closer? <laughs> oh, my crazy. God. I, I mean, if you... If I know it's a Imagine a seventh inning where you roll out Batances, an eighth inning where you roll out Chapman, and then a ninth inning where you roll out Mariano Rivera. It'd be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. You can't learn out of retirement. You probably could still pitch the guy. Um. I don't know. This is a good bullpen. Green, I love Green. I love Chad Green. I think he's awesome. You know, I mean, he comes in every time. He just, uh, he, he elevated his game once he became a closer. You know, I mean, yeah. he was good as a starter, and they, kept, they actually tried stretching him out mm-hmm. in the spring. He went to 50 pitches. Mm-hmm. But Boone said it. He said that was just for an emergency. Mm-hmm. You know, to have him stretched, but he's going to be in the pen now. Mm-hmm. So um, he's really good. This is a team that's going to have longevity for not just for several years, and that's what, and that's why you have Brian Cashman winning Executive of the Year last year because he has put this team together. Well, you know, with smart, smart deals, growing up, building up the farm system as he has over the years, and then finally mm-hmm. all of this blossoms all at once in the last year, and. You know what? The Yankees may have a dynasty here for for the next several years. You know, maybe they will win a World and Series this year. Give him credit. Not. Yeah, give him a ton of credit for not getting rid of Frazier and going after a Garrett Cole or that, somebody that, like that. That was that would have been a huge mistake. I if mean, they that was that. restraint. He had a really, and they said it. They were asking for so much. These people, mm-hmm. and you know what? He was in a position of strength, and he would just tell them, "I don't have to do this deal." No, and he didn't, and he didn't need he didn't to do to, it, and he didn't. He didn't do any deal. No. I mean, he made the one big deal for Stanton. That was all he needed to do. And you know what? It also keeps the Yankees... It also takes the Yankees out of the market for Bryce Harper, which if, if Harper's the contract demands I don't are, want him anyway. No, and he's a bit of a, nut, he, he's a, bit of a nutcase. His name. But if his, if his contract demands are as insane as they are, the Yankees are getting basically a, a, a bargain with Giancarlo Stanton when you yeah. think about it. They really are with the contract that mm-hmm. he has. But, um, and I think he's got a better um, demeanor about him. Mm-hmm. Um, Stan, I like Stan. All his interviews, he's a little on the quieter side, somewhat too. Mm-hmm. But it's like you got two. I, I call them the gentle giants between <laughs> Judge and him. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're not they're not mouthy. They're doing all the right things. And kudos to Sanchez. Remember last year, all his issues with catching. We haven't heard anything this year. He's gotten to everything. You know why? He lost thirty pounds. Mm-hmm. Remember last year, he put on all that weight. Baseball players don't have to be with all that weight, mm-hmm. all right? You've got to be able to move behind the plate. And he lost 30 pounds, and it's showing. Mm-hmm. Besides, he's hitting. I mean, he's hitting like he always does. But behind the plate, there's been no, you haven't heard anything. Uh, he is you know. He is one of the guys offensively that I do worry about a little bit. because Not, not just from the offensive standpoint, forget that, but the defense. Because his defense was so poor last year, especially in the playoffs. I mean, he really needs to pick up the game defensively. He really Because too many, too many teams are running against him right now. They really are. And teams will take advantage of that. No, but he, not, well, I don't know. In my game, he threw somebody out and he picked somebody off second mm-hmm. who was off the bat. So what I saw, I liked. Mm-hmm. Now, I haven't been able to see every game. Like today, they weren't televised again. Right. I don't understand this. They, you know, I, <laughs> a lot of your games weren't televised through the spring. So you didn't get to see 
everything that you wanted to see. Because, to say. because the home team but, broadcast um, don't want to travel. I saw it's live great. with Sanchez. Mm. And his arm, he was right on. He was mm-hmm. right on on both those throws. The one, there are a couple of things here I'm going to nitpick on. I, don't, I want to get your take on it. Second base and third base. They send mm-hmm. down the they send down Glaber Torres down to the minor minors. He had options, and but they're now going to give the starting starting job at second base to Neil Walker, instead of giving it to Torres. And Torres has had a very good spring training so far this year, and I, I really don't understand Torres hitting at two seventy five with five RBIs. I'm not a big Neil Walker guy. When he was with the Mets, all he did was complain about his role, complain about his contract. And also just not produced that all that much. And he really didn't do much last year before the Mets sent him away to Milwaukee. I don't understand why the Yankees, one, A, brought him in when they have young guys that are producing in, in spring training. Why not give one of these guys a, cha- a shot? And two, well, it's, it's a stopgap. I, I, I hate stopgaps. I really do. And, and, and even well, first of all, Tyler Wade is supposed to start, not Neil Walker now. Well, the, and that's the latest. Okay. Now, they may... They may uh, platoon a little because Tyler Wade's a lefty. Walker's a switch hitter. Mm-hmm. But right now, and Tyler Wade's stats, and I saw him in that game, the game I saw, he was, he was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. He's been fantastic in the field. He's batting, well, his career spring training is over 300. He was batting close. He's batting 286. Mm-hmm. Um, on base percentage is over 800. Uh, but defensively, he's good. He steals bases. He stole a mess of bases this year. So, um, I, that's what I'm hearing mm. now. I, I, now they're probably also going to platoon a little bit, but let's see who rises to the top on this. Mm. Cause Walker also could play third. Can he not? He could play third. He could play short. He could play second. He could play, you know, pretty much all the infield positions. So he's more of a, he's a, he's a, right. he's a, he's a kind of a utility guy at this point in his career, but right. I, I just don't like playing. Well, he I just, was told when they signed him. He mm-hmm. was going to be utility mm. because he's going to back up third. Um, what, what you're going to have in the infield, basically, um, or you got Bird at first, you're going to have Wade, uh, D.D., and Drury, right? Mm-hmm. Then you've got Walker and Torres are your two other guys. That's it. That's all they're carrying on the bench. I mean, I'm bent, I mean, well, I know Austin Roman's your backup catcher. But, I mean, as far as infielders, minus the catcher. That's all your infielders because you're going with the extra pitcher. Mm-hmm. So Torres, Walker, um, Wade, they're all going to be playing, I would think, you know, to give D.D. a break. You know, maybe you put him at D.H. or give him a day. You put Torres at short, um, Drury, you know. We'll see how, they all, how this all plays out, mm-hmm. you know. But from what I understood, Wade not only is making the roster – because he's the way he's performing, and he played today. I believe he played today. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what he did because I couldn't get the game. Thank you, MLB. <laughs> um, so I, I agree with you. I didn't like the Walker signing because mm-hmm. I thought Andrew Hard did a great job this spring, and he really won a spot on the roster. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's in Cashman's mind. Well, you got to remember with Cashman, he may be thinking. Halfway through the year, trading deadline, getting rid of Walker. But what are you going to get from? I mean, he's, he's, he's trading he's, him and bringing up one of the kids. But you don't know it's in Cashman's head. Well, he's, he's then Walker's got to hit hit very very well. If the Yankees are going to trade him because my because part of my issue, my hang up is this: Brandon Drury is going to make this team. He's going to. There's talk, at least from what I've read, that he's going to be the starting third baseman. I would like to see Andujar start the season as third base, but they're going to send him down to the minors. Uh, which I can understand if he has options, but eventually Andujar is going to come up here. He's going to start at third base, and then what are you going to do now at second? If you're going to have Wade, and you're going to have Walker, you're going to have Torres, and you're going to have Drury, well, someone's got to be the out of man out, and that's got to be Walker. That's where Walker made, the signing made no sense to me. I think Brandon Drury could be that guy in that role that Walker, Walker's going to have here as a utility guy and be the guy that's going to be able to come off the bench, give you some at-bats, maybe play a little third, a little second, a little short. I guess they think Andujar needs more time at third. Mm. And I understand that because that's been his bugaboo. Um, he did okay this year at third base. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw him, he made one play in my game to uh, go into his left. He made the play okay. I think they want him more seasoning at third for a little bit. 
Um, as far as Torres is concerned, he had an awful spring. He had an awful spring at the plate. He was striking out. He was swinging at stuff out of the zone. It was terrible. Glider was going down no matter what. I mean, mm. that was just, uh, I mean, there's no two ways about it. In my game, he was awful. Mm. So you knew that he was going to go. He's coming off the injury. We know it's not the throwing arm and all that, but you still hit. Um, and I think Andrew Hart, too, he wasn't at AAA. He was at AA, was brought up to Scranton. So I don't have a problem with them really, especially Andrew Hart, learning your position mm. and learning it well. We know he can hit. There's no two ways about it. Every time he's been up, even this spring, he hit well. We know he can hit, you mm. know, major league pitching. Can you field your position? Mm. You, you can't be a liability mm-hmm. at the hot corner. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. We, we went through Chase Headley. How many, what, 30 hours one year, 20-something oh, hours? Terrible. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't do it. Mm-hmm. So you've got to get, you've got to get him right there. And then, like you said, though, he has options and that's why he was sent down. Yeah. Drury, they're very high on. I'm um, one of his, his old coach said he's going to be something special. He's again, 25 years old. He's a young guy, you know, another young one. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand. And I didn't like Neil Walker either. Yeah. And I don't, but I'm, I'm thinking what, if I'm Cashman, why am I doing this right now? All right, let's get into the right. Torres, Torres was horrible. He needs by almost a full season. Like, there's no reason to rush Glider up this year to the majors. There really isn't unless you have massive injuries. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So let him get right. Let him, he's coming off the Tommy John. Give him a year at AAA. Let him get right. Now, next year, Walker's not there. there Walker was signed for one year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now let's see what Drury can do. He's got to prove himself. Yeah, so, that, that makes perfect wait. sense. You know, mm-hmm. so that's what I'm thinking. I don't like it. I kind of understand, though, what he's thinking. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. I, mean, I think that those are, those are great points, and I, I I think you're absolutely right. Walker's just kind of that placeholder right now until they make sure that some of these young guys are going to be set at these positions, and, and then they can then they can make those deal. moves. You're right. Now think about it next year. Yeah. I mean, I think about next year. We didn't even start this year, but <laughs> let's fast forward to 19 a little bit. Sure. Sabathia would be gone. Whether mm-hmm. you sign him another year, that's a whole nother ball game, which probably won't happen. Right. So Sabathia will be gone. Gardner will be gone. This mm-hmm. is it for his contract. Are you signing him again? Not with your loaded. You've got McKinney. You've got Frazier. You've got a ton of outfielders. The Floriel will be up in AAA mm-hmm. next year this year at some point they're putting him down i think to trenton mm-hmm. or single a to trenton so i mean he's they're the one they're, they can't stop talking about him so um hopefully get rid of ellsbury now ellsbury's down to two years mm. on his contract next year can you unload him somewhere or eat it what? i would almost eat it yeah a rod it's forty two million dollars. I mean, I guess they I guess they could eat it. That's a lot of money to eat. Forty two million dollars. But well, still that's that's why you gotta get rid of him next year. Yeah. You gotta somehow make that trade. I don't know what it's gonna be or how's it gonna be or how you could package him. You gotta get rid of him next year. They're pretty, they're, so what do you have? You've got all these positions available again. Weren't weren't they pretty close to trading him to San Francisco this winter? I think they, they were. They were very close. Yeah. They were close. Mm. And what happened? San Francisco did something else. Well, they went out and I got think. they got uh, they got McCutcheon, and they went got one Long- Longoria. That's it. Yeah, mm-hmm. they got those two guys because they were close. I thought for sure. Oh, that's what they get rid of Ellsbury because then you could bring up Frazier. Then your outfield is you got Gardner, Hicks, Stanton, Judge, Frazier. That's your five outfielders. Mm-hmm. Frazier's still having issues with the concussions right now anyway. Mm-hmm. And even Ellsbury, even though he played today two innings, he's not ready for opening day. But they're not DLing him. Mm-hmm. So they're going to go with Stanton, Judge, Hicks, and, and Gardner. Right. They're only going to go with four outfielders right now. Maybe he gets rid of Ellsbury this year. Maybe well, he gets the trade deadline. I, I was going to say. I don't know. Somebody needs somebody. I don't know. I was going to say. You I don't know. know. Cashman's got to try something. I was going to. I was going to say that, you know, we talk about Walker tra- being a tra- trade piece this year. Even Ellsbury's a trade piece this year. You know, let's just say mm-hmm. he does contribute coming off the bench and does a couple of good things, and you get a team that's desperate, a team that's in a wild card race in either, in either league. I, th- I think at this point, it doesn't matter if it's in the American League or the National League. If you are the Yankees and you can get rid of him and get rid of his contract, and someone's willing to take that money and take the four and take a 
part of that $42 million that, that will be owed to him over the next two years, then you go right ahead and do it. Now, I don't know who that's going to be. Could be, you know, maybe San Francisco jumps back into the mix. They were pretty close to getting him last time. Maybe they go back into it. Uh, maybe it's somebody else. Maybe, I don't know, maybe like a Minnesota or somebody. Whoever it's going to be, if they're willing to make that make that kind of make that kind of commitment, and the Yankees are willing to take some some of the uh, some money on onto themselves, then you go right ahead and do it if you can. Absolutely, and you know, suppose somebody else goes down another team and they have a big injury in their center fielder mm-hmm. or whatever, um, they might want Ellsbury. I'll say this though, when I look at this lineup right now as it is. And you have, and I, I, I would, <laughs> I would hate to be Aaron Boone because he has the toughest job, and probably the easiest job at the same time is trying to figure out how to get these guys lined up in in, in an order on a regular basis. I mean, you're going to have potentially three, four, five, six, right? Judge, Bird, Sanchez, Gregorius, uh, Stanton. Maybe, obviously, not necessarily in that order. I mean, that is just murderers row. We have not seen this kind of lineup. Maybe. E- in in a, quite some time from the Yankees, certainly going back to the uh, Mantle Maris days, if you want to go back that far, you want to go back to, to days of uh, Joe DiMaggio even. I mean, they've had some great lineups over the years, but certainly not with this kind of thunder power for some, for some time. Even when they had Karen, even when they had A Rod and Giambi and Jeter and Matsui, you know, even those teams that were really 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 good. I don't know what mm-hmm. it is, but this lineup just feels better than those than those lineups, doesn't it? it? Really does. Oh, absolutely. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, because people are talking about it. I would not break them up. No. I would put Judge Stanton. Stanton let someone navigate through that, because you know what? You, you're going to have to say, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm depending on as a pitcher what your strength is and what their strength is. You're going to say, all right. I just got to, you know, I, I could get Sanchez. I know I could get Sanchez. I'm going to go this route. Like, let them think about it. Let them have to really think. So if you go Judge, Stanton, Sanchez. Um, Bird. Bird or Dee Dee. Dee Dee and Bird. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That whole group, that's five guys you got to maneuver through somehow. Mm-hmm. And you know what? You can't get them all. No. You're not going to get them all. Mm-hmm. So somebody's going to either hit a home run. So, all of them are capable. Somebody's going to get the big hit, going to get the double, going to go the opposite way, whatever it is. You're mm-hmm. not going to be able to get through there. I saw it in spring training. The game I saw, it was Judge, Stanton, Sanchez, I think it was Dee Dee and Bird. Dee Dee had a two-run homer. Judge hit a bomb. Sanchez was two for th- uh, four. He had two, a double and something else. Stanton got, I mean, no, Stanton wasn't there. Stanton was the only one that wasn't at this game. Mm-hmm. They did not play him. But it was all the rest of them in a row. You, how do you maneuver through that? I don't know. Now it does, and you were missing Stanton. Yeah. And you, <laughs> it, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy lineup. I mean, you could even, you could even start it at the two spot. I mean, you can go, you know, te- potentially you can have Stanton hitting in the two spot, and you can go judge and what have you after that. I mean, Aaron Boone can do what, basically whatever he wants with those five guys between two, two through seven, and unless there's an injury, he can't be wrong. He can't be wrong. That's, 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 that's an envious position to be in. It really is. Now, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because when I saw him in that Mets-Yankees game down in spring training, the kid that hit the, home, hit the Grand Slam home run, McKinney, he had that big big preseason, five home runs, twelve RBIs. Oh yeah, is he is he, he was now, good? He's not hitting. He's not hitting with the average. He's only hitting one seventy one. I mean, is he is he going to be coming off the bench? Or just are they going to just option him back to triple? I think they're probably going to option him. No, back he's to going. Line. He's already been optioned. Old. He's a good player. You're going. It's tough. It's it's hard to send some of these guys down when they have these big camps. It's really hard to do. No, he's got twelve RBIs. I know. He has the, he has the most RBIs this whole t- this whole. Uh, you know, it was, out of everybody. It was funny. When, when he hit that Grand Slam home run against the Mets, that entire stadium, and this was in the Mets ballpark, in the Mets uh, spring training park in Port St. Lucie, that entire stadium erupted. I mean, there was, it was like, it was like th- three to one Yankee fans to Mets fans in the stadium. That's how many Yankee fans were, were in, the, in there. There were so many Yankee, I think I even texted to you, this to you. I was waiting for the uh, home run siren to go off. <laughs> 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 well, and Judge finally hit a home run the other day, and then he had two last night. So I guess he's 
he's, he's getting into form. Mm. <laughs> Everybody was worried about that. <laughs> but you've got to remember, and, and I told somebody at work, because they were going ballistic, oh, Judge, you know, last year, like, they, he thinks he's a fly-by-night. No. He's not a fly-by-night. No. All right? And you got to give him, he was definitely hurt. Well, you know, the second half, I said, I don't want to hear about that. We know he was hurt from the All-Star. He admitted it now. He just admitted it not too long ago, weeks ago. He was in. He was hurt after that All Star uh, mm-hmm. break, which he hit all those home runs. So, um, you, 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 I, 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 I said he's probably trying to compensate, and that's what happened because everybody said, "Oh, he's not for real." Blah blah blah. Yes, he is. He's for real. So, just uh, and he's got a great arm. Mm-hmm. He's a good outfielder. He's actually a good base runner, considering he's a big guy. Mm. He's stolen a couple of bases. I mean, yeah. he's sneaky about it. Yeah, nine. But not that he wanted to steal bases, but, you know, he can. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's definitely not. I said, you've got to give these guys a chance. They're kids. Mm. The Think one, about it. The one thing that he did that he did admit that he was gonna, not going to participate in the home run derby this time, which is probably a smart idea, mm-hmm. considering he uh, that that the the home run derby may have played a role in that in that shoulder injury. But I I I, I still well, also he yeah. felt he, he remember how many times did he hit the wall last year? A couple of times with that a left lot. arm. A lot. He went into the wall a couple of times, he, making making um, catches. So I'm thinking that too probably didn't help. Yeah, that him. didn't help. It certainly didn't help at all. I mean, I don't know if he, I, I don't know if he's going to hit sixty home runs. I don't know if that's going to happen this year. But he's he's going to hit somewhere between forty five to fifty home runs. You're going to see the same thing from Stanton, forty five to fifty home runs, and that just those two Which alone are going fine. to hit ninety home runs. Which is fine. Crazy. I'll take it. I, I think a lot of people will take that. Imagine <laughs> now. Imagine if you get a complete year from Greg Bird, and now I know Bird had a down year in the in the spring this year, which compared to last year mm-hmm. might be a good omen because he had a great spring last year and then had, got hurt. And you know, didn't contribute much at all until the late, late late part of the year. If the Yankees get a complete year from Greg Bird, and he finally hits where they expect him, you know, be that twenty five, thirty home run guy, and you know that Sanchez is going to give you that. I mean, think about that. Four guys, and this goes back to what we just talked about. Four guys in the lineup that can produce. I don't know, sixty to seventy, seventy percent of your home, uh, of your home runs of your power. Don't forget hits. about Didi. I know. I, I, Didi can give you 25. You can give you I 25? Think. I mean, already there. With that short porch. You can get like, you know, 250 home runs out of five guys. I mean, that's, that's just crazy. I know. I look, around the, I look around the American League, and I try to think of teams that can compete with this, this Yankee team. It's hard to do. I understand that. The one team that I think can is probably Houston. Not just from the standpoint that they've, they've done it already and they've already won a World Series, but because... They still have a lot of good players in the team. They have the good pitching with Keuchel and Verlander, Bringer and Altuve, and McCann and Gannis. So that's the one team, the Houston Astros, that I think could still give the Yankees some problems. I don't know if I want to buy into the idea that the Red Sox, and I think the Red Sox will be good. I don't know if the Red Sox are going to be that good that they're going to be better than the Yankees will. That, that's the one thing that I will say about Boston. I don't know. People keep picking Boston as some, a little bit over Yankees for pitching. Mm-hmm. I don't see how David Price has to really rebound. He's, he's, he doesn't get along with the Boston press. There's a lot of issues mm. there. Pomerantz is hurt right now. Yes. I don't know exactly what it is, but he wasn't going to start with them with mm-hmm. the season. Um, uh, yes, they have Mookie Betts. They have Ben Attendee. They have... Um, Who's the other guy besides that? They have Ben Attendee, um, uh, Alexander Bogarts. Bogarts. You know, they got these good, this young core, too. Devers um, is a nice young player. They're He's, not those guys. Those guys, uh, Ben Attendee can get a hold of one, but really those three aren't home run hitters, per se. And now the question's going to be, and this is kind of the last part here, this is the big question for me going into the season, is going to happen late in the season. And it's the same question can also be asked for, and I even brought this up to a guy from the Red Sox, the same question is going to be asked for uh, Alex Cora as well. Once we get into late August, and the, you know, the, once we start to get that feel of fall in the air in late August, going into to September, and then obviously in October, how is Aaron Boone going to manage this lineup? Well, we're going to find out very quickly with what kind of manager uh, Aaron Boone is in crisis. Because when you're doing it, once, it's one thing to, to, to manage the team in crisis through spring training and trying to figure things out. You're trying to get, you're trying to find out who can be part of a 25 man, who, which guys can be part of your 40 man. That's what you're trying to do in the spring training. Now we're about to get into the nitty gritty here, and it's going to get into some pre- pressurized situational baseball. And that to me 
is going to be the biggest part of Aaron Boone and whether he is going to succeed here as a manager. I think he will succeed. I think he'll eventually win a World Series here. Those things are going to come. But I just want to find out, you know, early in the season, especially late in the season, how he manages situational baseball when it comes up because that is going to be the difference between the Yankees winning ball games and losing ball games in critical situations. Well, I think one of the things about him, and I know he's got a pedigree because of his father and his grandfather, right. and even his, you know they're all in it and all that stuff. But he said something very interesting in an interview. He was being interviewed, and he said when he was a kid, like mm-hmm. eight years old, seven years old, he would watch and he would like he was like a sponge, like he absorbed what was being. It wasn't just playing the game; it was almost like managing, almost like what would you do in this situation? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking he's prepared. He's probably prepared than most, whether he can actually pull it off and he can actually show, like you said, in a pressure situation coming through and doing the right thing. Um, We'll see what happens, but learning from young and I know it because I did it. I always enjoyed the nuances of the game. You know what? I can't wait to see. I cannot wait to see when, when a player gets uh, thrown out at home plate and then gets tossed from the game. I want to see Aaron Boone get <laughs> pissed off. I want to see a pissed off. Because we've seen like the, the happy-go-lucky Aaron Boone for so many years, right, on ESPN? Right. I want to see Aaron yeah. Boone with like veins popping out of his, his skull, going full, bu- f- going full Lupinella <laughs> on, 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 uh, on Angel Hernandez. Right? That's what I want to see. <laughs> oh, is he still umpiring? Oh, he's he so is. bad. He's one of the worst in the game. Uh, the worst. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Worst umpire. Oh my god. Oh, he's terrible. <laughs> Can't wait. I'm just like chomping at the bit. So it, I all really ki- am. it all kicks off a week from today, actually. Today's the Thursday, it's the twenty second. And guess what? I am off. So I can sit and Uh-oh. watch games all day. All day. Because I don't have to night. work. Baseball. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> I'm gonna be like you know when they say they binge on Netflix? Yeah. I'm gonna binge on baseball Thursday. Binge on baseball. I like that. We should, you should just make. You should just like. I'm gonna get. I'll order some like takeout, yeah. delivered, oh. and just binge, just sit all day. You got. You got a. Th- you got a three thirty seven first pitch in Toronto mm-hmm. next week. Get the Chinese food delivery guy's number immediately for a three thirty five. Exactly. Three thirty five delivery, and if he's a minute late, deliver early. Deliver. <laughs> exactly. Oh my the goodness. Whole thing. Yeah, and just sit there and just my big screen TV and mm-hmm. my recliner and uh, my snack tray and just eat in the living and just eat by the TV. Just just t- just make sh- one thing that Aaron Boone has to do is just tell 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 all of his guys when you're because ra- if you remember this from many years ago when you're rounding for towards third base, do not slide head first into Toronto because we all know what happened to Jeter when he did that opening day. Oh my god, oh, that remember was that? horrible. <laughs> I, I was watching that game. Oh my god, that was oh. just like a nightmare. Absolute nightmare, but um, no, I'm ready. I'm more between the snow and, <laughs> and the storms, and you're like, and it's spring, mm-hmm. and it was snowing yesterday, and you're like, give me a break. Where's baseball? Yeah, well, le- where is it? I'm, I'm just salivating. At least the Yankees open up in the dome. The Mets have to open up at City Field, and I don't, I don't even know if they've dug that dug the stadium out yet. Well, they're <laughs> saying it's 56 degrees and sunny. Predicted. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's far out, but right now, there's that's what they're saying. Fifty six degrees. What is that? I've never heard of that. <laughs> I know. It's just, it, well, I mean, really, it's like crazy. If I it, mean, this weather is just the only good thing is because it's March and melts quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's not the ground's not frozen. Yeah. So, uh, but still, it's a pain in the neck to shovel. It's oh. heavy. This crap. It is. It's terrible. Every single storm has been wet and heavy snow, not fluffy. You know what? Next year, next year, I think I'm, I'm going to live. I'm going to move to Florida for a month. <laughs> live in Florida for an entire I'm month. You, you. You, you're, you're, you are invited. There you go. <laughs> I'm going. I'm telling you. Next next year when I go, I made two separate trips. Yeah. I'm going longer. I'm taking. Yeah. One, I don't care. I'm, I'm, one trip I'll do like my sh- normal, but a second trip or whatever, I'm safe for like two weeks or so. I'm, yeah. I'm not dealing with this. I'm yeah, not I, dealing with this. Yeah, I think I think I might do the same thing. I might even I might even I might even just drive a drive across the guy. I know it's a long drive from like Port St. Lucie to Tampa. It's like four hours. I might just do it. I might do it. You know, if I'm I mean, I'm bold enough to do it, I might just. Do I don't it. think it's quite. I think it's like three, three yeah. and a half. 
That's not terrible. Well, it's three from West Palm. Yeah. And you're up, you're up a little further, so on an angle. Yeah. Maybe it's four. Maybe, maybe. it is four. Maybe. I, I guess. But you know what? Maybe next year they'll be on the East Coast again. Maybe. See, they'll, I bet you they'll be back. I hope they're back by the Nationals and in Houston again. That is a, that's such a great ball. I'm going to that ballpark again. That place was nice. Isn't that? Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful park. Mm-hmm. And it's 10 minutes from my condo. <laughs> that, that makes not it even, even easier. Not even 10 minutes. Not <laughs> even 10 minutes. What am I saying? It's like two minutes. Of I live off the military right there. You can just right walk. There. You can walk. <laughs> yeah. Really? It's like crazy. Oh, wow. my goodness. Anyway, good times. Karen, this has been awesome. Uh, I will again. We'll, we we will reconvene in the next couple of uh, next week or so because we got baseball kicking off. We got the uh, NFL draft coming up as the yeah. What, what day is the draft? The draft is the twenty sixth of April, so Thursday of April. So we got a couple. We got a little. We got late. a couple weeks. Right. We'll see how the uh, how the Jets uh, uh, can't wait for the Jets to select a punter. With the third pick, and where is this pick. draft? Is it Chicago again? It's in Big D. Building? It's in it's it is in Dallas. So you can rest assured. Uh, so if you are so you can rest assured that Jerry been Jones. So is going nice to, if it was in New York with the two New York teams. Oh, with with this draft, it would have been early. perfect. It would have been perfect for New York with this draft, right? It would be perfect. Oh my God, they would have been off the chart in the MSG or wherever mm-hmm. they used to have it, right? Radio City, mm-hmm. be packed. Because if, if, if the Jets decide to select uh, like the wrong quarterback, uh, you would see the fans storm the, storm the stage and like beat up Roger Goodell. <laughs> 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 oh, jeez! Oh my God, this is gonna be interesting. It is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Karen, I'll talk to you soon. All right, take care, Michael. Take care. All right, bye bye. Bye bye. Folks, there's Karen Van Cat, and again, we'll be back next time with her in the next uh, in the next week or so, maybe next two weeks or something like that. We'll do something on the draft. But uh, baseball is just around the corner, folks. We've got one more team we're going to hit up, and that, of course, is the Mets. Now, I know we want to do the Astros as well. We'll probably still do the Astros at some point, even after the season starts. We'll, uh, we'll get in contact with someone down there. We'll do some stuff on the World Champions. But our spring training tour, we'll do the Mets next week, early next week, and we will put an end to the 2018 spring training tour here and get you ready for baseball. It's kicking off on Thursday. Remember to follow us, folks, on the social media, facebook.com slash open mic program, at open mic NJ on Twitter, and, of course, like and subscribe right here on the Sports Talk Nation. For Karen Van Cat, I'm Michael Cohen. We'll talk to you next time.